It is always difficult to pass comment on the values and achievements of a society when so many years have passed. But it is true that unlike any other age, the extraordinary Victorian period of British history has always excited mixed emotions in those who care to look back. Perhaps some find the superficial, po-faced prudishness of the age faintly amusing. Others, some modern-day politicians included, believe Victorian values are something to be aspired to. Many remember a society where great comfort and wealth stood in stark contrast with dire poverty and child cruelty. Yet few could deny that the age to which Queen Victoria gave her name saw incredible and monumental changes in British society. There was, for instance, the urbanization of a country which was swept along by the Industrial Revolution, whose population rose from 25 million in the early 1800s to almost 40 million people by the end of the century. There were great advances in engineering, education and medicine. There was at least some attempt to tackle the poverty and squalor which blighted the land. The era heralded the genius of Dickens and Hardy, Stevenson and Brunel. And the British people watched in admiration as the famous Redcoat armies marched to win an empire for their queen and country. It was a truly remarkable age. A time of transition and progress. It was the age of Victorian Britain. I was awoke at six o'clock by Mama, who told me that the Archbishop of Canterbury and Lord Cunningham were here and wished to see me. I got out of bed and went into my sitting room, only in my dressing gown and alone, and saw them. Lord Cunningham, the Lord Chamberlain, then acquainted me that my poor uncle the King was no more, and had expired at twelve minutes past two this morning, and that consequently I am Queen. It was the early hours of 20th of June, 1837, that the long reign of Queen Victoria began. She would become the longest reigning monarch in British history. Her journal noted the moment when she learned of her ascension to the throne. It is said that upon hearing Lord Cunningham utter the word Queen, Victoria instinctively flung out her hand for him to kiss. It was a typical, spontaneous gesture, which symbolised the young Victoria's acute awareness of her new position.